Like the call to order the Tuesday, October 25th, 2016 Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors meeting. Certification of compliance with the open meeting law. Uh, the agenda is posted October 21st at 10.30 a.m. Thank you, John. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Twenty-three supervisors are present. Thank you, John. The county administrator's presentation of the 2017 proposed budget. Adam. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. There are a lot of friendly faces in the room this evening, and I appreciate all of our department heads and many key staff being with us this evening. It's a little bit of a anticlimactic evening because last week we of course distributed the 2017 proposed budget so for a few of you in fact most of you in this room this may be redundant at least the first part which as you know this budget includes a property tax decrease a levy decrease of one percent or about five hundred thousand dollars and a property tax rate reduction of about two percent twelve cents the rate will go from 577 to 565 so if you if you have a hundred thousand dollar home you'll see approximately a twelve percent a twelve dollar reduction though of course depending on the value of your home and what else is happening in that area that may or may not be the case but overall the property tax levy is going down the rate is going down yet we're seeing a county wide budget increase we're going to a hundred and forty six million dollar budget hundred and forty six million forty seven million of that is property tax levy but with other fees state federal revenue we have a hundred and forty six million dollar budget and this increase is associated predominantly with capital projects predominantly the new transportation complex and if you haven't looked already on your desk is a beautiful high-end summary from our transportation director, Greg Schnell. Greg and his staff put that together this pa the past few days, which, which gives you a very nice overview of the cost, of what's been involved, and I want to compliment Greg for his work on that. The budget supports 19 departments, about 820 employees, implementing over 207 programs and services. It is a very important budget supporting about 115,000 residents in Sheboygan County, and I'm proud of the team and the collaboration and all the hard work that's gone into it. And of course, next week, November 1st, is when the board will ultimately adopt it. Tonight is your budget by budget review, the hearing, the public hearing. And again, we have the vast majority of our department heads and key staff here in case there are questions that we haven't already answered. I want to compliment the board for the collaboration and the teamwork. Of course, most of the heavy lifting is done at the liaison committee level. The department heads do an excellent job meeting the targets that we've established, positioning you to achieve your goal, which we've accomplished. But the liaison committees thoughtfully review these budgets. The finance committee, Chair Greg Wagaman and the members of the finance committee do most of the heavy lifting and have done an excellent job. And I want to thank Chairman Wagaman and all the finance committee members for their work on this budget. I mentioned a few of the highlights last week and today I want to take a little broader approach to that and I simply went through the cover letters of all the department heads today to refresh 
my memory of the highlights because you know it's really a, largely a status quo budget. We're holding the line minimally or modestly reducing property taxes to preserve core programs and services, key programs and services in health and human services, law enforcement, and of course the list goes on and on, but key programs and services. But even though we've achieved that every year because of the creativity of our department heads and staff and county board supervisors, because of the prioritization that goes on, because of how we listen to the community and seek to respond to needs and concerns, we do make adjustments. And within this budget, there are some really nice, interesting initiatives that I think all of us can take some pride in. For example, and I'm not going to touch on every department, so I won't be mentioning every department head. So please don't be disappointed if I don't mention you. But I went through these, and if there were highlights that jump out, jumped out at me, I wanted to quickly touch on them. For example, Aaron Brault, our Planning and Conservation Director. Aaron's going to be working with his team to now implement the DNR stormwater pollution plans that are an unfunded mandate, but one that we need to do that will improve water quality starting in 2017. He's going to continue to work with his team on the Amsterdam Dunes, our wetland mitigation bank and preservation area. Good work's going on there and will continue to go on there in 2017. And very recently, thanks to the county board's support, Aaron and I have been having conversations with developers on the Penn and 7th Avenue property for an economic development opportunity. And Aaron, once again, is leading the charge on that, and I appreciate his leadership. Wendy Sharnan, our finance director, has she had a whirlwind year, year and a half with Sheboygan County and has really hit the ground running. I've been very impressed not only with her command of the material, her leadership on the budget development, but she really dove into our J.D. Edwards financial system. Not a real wonderful thing to dive into unless you have that kind of skill set and passion. And Wendy and her team are going to further improve this system to get reports and other facets of it working that we're already paying for, but not really fully implementing to benefit our management team. So I thank her for her leadership on that. Joe DiCecco couldn't be here tonight, but I see Joel Ermanski is the DA elect. And I want to thank Joel and Carla and their team for the outstanding initiative to come forward and make a case to create a county prosecutor position. There are some counties that have done this, but I really think Joel deserves a lot of credit for working with Joe and pushing and saying, you know what, if we do this, we're going to free up some resources for the current um, attorney to focus on this and make sure that children that are in foster homes waiting months, if not years, for placement are going to get placed more quickly in a loving permanent home. What a wonderful example of establishing priorities and the county board support to get something done to help children in this community. So it's dealing with ter termination of parental rights, it's dealing with guard guardianship, it takes a real strong skill set to be able to do this type of work and I thank Joel and his co-workers for their initiative. John Dolson, our county clerk, he pushed hard on getting new election equipment countywide. Originally it was in the five-year plan, I think, for 2019. And he said, along with Chris Lewinsky, you know what, this equipment is getting dated. Some of it is like the old track cassettes from the 70s, 80s, and we got to do something about it. And I want to thank John for his leadership because we all know how important good, viable election equipment is. So thank you. Tom Agerbrecht, our Health and Human Services Director. I could probably spend an hour or two talking about the leadership of Tom and his his staff and the good work that they do. For the Health and Human Services Board and the 44 programs or so that you spend the time, Supervisor Baumgart and others, going through a lot of important, critical safety net programs and services in that area. And as you know, uh, Tom and his staff will be piloting efforts to launch a partnership with Sheboygan South High School to provide counseling services for at-risk youth and mentoring services for their families in 2017. Public health nursing will be extended to families of children experiencing emergency psychiatric ho hospitalizations in an effort to assure stabilization and follow-up care. 
An interdisciplinary team of departmental personnel will be formed to reduce and prevent the need for children's long-term institutional placement. And also, this year, and, it's, and it'll be fully implemented next year, will be the establishment of our drug treatment court. That Tom certainly gives a tremendous amount of credit to Jody Galloway and Joe DiCecco and Judge Ed Stangle, County Clerk Melody Clerk, Melody Lorge, and many others who work together to get this done. And Tom, I want to thank you and your team for your leadership in this area because this drug court is going to really make a difference in our community. Laura Henning Lorenz. She's working on a new software system to implement an interface between our cashiering and the exciting topic of J.D. Edwards. And I want to thank Laura for doing that heavy lifting and uh, making sure that taxes are collected. Her staff, they're dedicated, they're hardworking, and if it wasn't for their good work, we wouldn't have the resources we need to implement the programs and services. She also is going to be doing an internal control cash audit to review their current practices, ensuring that our office is conducting best practices in all areas of cash handling. Good work, leading by example. Chris Lewinsky is in the midst of completing our IT department remodeling, working with Jim Tabeast and others, and is that going to be a nice improvement? <coughs> He also was the first IT department head in some time to reduce the interdepartmental costs countywide, and that's because he went through his budget with a fine tooth comb with Wendy Sharnan's assistance, and they made some improvements for the betterment of all of us. And as you also are aware, he's going to be fully implementing the Ring of Fiber initiative, which is a tremendous coordinated effort between Sheboygan County, the city of Sheboygan, and the city school district. Good work and thank you, Chris Lewinsky. Sheriff Todd Preeby, Jim Rasu, they're with us today doing immense heavy lifting with combined dispatch. We're going to go live. We're shooting for mid to the end of November. Really, we're already doing combined dispatch. But overall, I think people forget overall between the backbone, the new towers, taking the, the staff from the city of Sheboygan and integrating them with Sheboygan County, all the radios that had to be purchased, the immense work associated with emergency response system is a $15 million project. And I want to thank Sheriff Preby and Inspector Rasu and Sergeant Christy Dublay and everyone who's been involved with that project. It will help save lives. It will help save lives. It's good work. We're struggling a little bit with our correctional facilities and that we're losing, we don't have as much room as we used to, unfortunately. But other counties are as well, and the inspector and sheriff are working with counties to actually board inmates, which is helping us with some additional revenue in 2017. So we appreciate that. And then finally, some of you are aware, certainly the Law Committee and Finance Committee are well aware that we had, as part of the budget process, discussions about the Wisconsin Community Services Intoxicated Driver Intervention Program, or WCS for short. And the question was whether or not to pull that out of the budget or see if we need additional resources or how are we going to handle this. And though the process at one point was not as smooth as we may have all liked, the bottom line is we're going to continue with the service and the cost went from $107,000 a year to $65,000 a year. And I want to thank again Inspector Rasu and the Sheriff and others who looked at this, stirred the pot a little bit, looked at other alternatives. I know that the law committee is going to continue to look at it, but that is part and built in of their overall budget. Ellen Schleicher, Register of Deeds, continues to provide excellent service to the people of this community, and I like the fact that she, she and her staff have really been looking to complete all the redacting and scanning projects in that department. Immense number of documents. 2017, they'll continue to do that, so ultimately we can provide better service to the community, preserve these documents, and get more on the internet so it's more accessible. Greg Schnell, I mentioned him a moment ago. My goodness, talk about maybe a little bit of fatigue from 2016. The transportation proposal was a huge, huge initiative. 
and Greg had the shoulders to help steer the ship and move it forward. And I can't tell you how much I respect and appreciate Greg's leadership, Wendy Sharnan's leadership, Carl Bising's leadership, Roger Testrudi's leadership, Chairman Wagner's leadership, and the list goes on and on with all the good people that stepped up to help us get the transportation proposal through. Absolutely going to be a tremendous investment in our community going forward to maintain, to responsibly maintain our transportation system, to share some revenue with the other municipalities, to provide some property tax relief. We're also looking at building a new transportation complex. Again, Greg is a key individual involved with that. As Where's Jim Tabeast? Jim Tabeast. Jim Tabeast is one of our unsung heroes in this organization. There isn't a project that doesn't have his fingerprints on it. And when it comes to this transportation complex, which at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, is going to be about a $24, $25 million project. <coughs> it's going to be individuals like Jim DeBeast who is going to provide the critical oversight to make sure it's done right and efficiently. And I want to thank Jim because this is a major initiative for 2017 going forward. So thank everyone involved with the transportation proposal and the new complex. We will be doing our 30 miles of overlay next year. We will be catching up and we will be more fiscally responsible as a result of it. Charles Sweet, is Charles with us today or not? No, Greg gave him the night off. That was nice of you, Greg. The airport, boy, have you gotten out to the airport recently? Transportation Committee just get out, got out there and did a little tour the other day, checked out uh, Supervisor Hoffman's area, <laughs> took good care of all the people along that, and I appreciated that exchange, but the uh, apron, the taxiways, a lot of good work is going on at the airport and will continue to go on in 2017. And the, the bang for our buck is remarkable. We're looking to spend over two and a half million dollars there next year in improvements. And really it's still about a 10%, 15% contribution from the county. Most of it comes from the Bureau of Aeronautics. So good things happening at the airport. I'm almost done. I mentioned Jim Tabeast a few minutes ago. Not only will he be very involved with the transportation complex, but we have courthouse security enhancements as part of the 2017 budget that, have, that are probably long overdue. And I want to thank the board for their support in the five-year capital plan. I want to thank Gene Gallimore and Steve Steinert, who co-chaired the advisory committee, the ad hoc committee, looking at making these safety security enhancements. We're going to improve the front courthouse steps. We're going to fix the flagpole. We're going to do some good work in the courthouse. Thank you, Jim Tabeast. I see Associate Dean Dan Anholt with us this evening. Thank you for joining us. And I see Jack, uh, Jackie Joseph Silverstein. And I think you all know that I'm fond of Jackie. Not only is she a tremendous professional, but she's made such good things happen at UW Sheboygan. And the state no recognized it. And recently she got a promotion to. Now it's Regional Executive Officer and Dean. I just refer to her as the Supreme Commander. <laughs> I want to thank both of them for their leadership at UW Sheboygan. We're going to have, once again, with Jim, uh, Jim Tabeast's support, but certainly their staff, HVAC upgrades at UW Sheboygan. It just continues to improve out there. And the County Board deserves a lot of credit for offering that kind of facility to our community. Rochelle Valeski. Our five-star facility at Rocky Knoll. It wasn't before she started, but it is today. We're a little concerned about maintaining that five-star because we have some staffing challenges out there. And it's not just Rocky Knoll, it's the industry. But we, we have some challenges, and the Healthcare Centers Committee is well aware of it, as is our HR director and others. But Rochelle continues to raise the bar. Census continues to improve. In 2017, we're looking at and some of this has already been purchased, but will be fully implemented in 2017. New therapy equipment for our residents, a new resident call system, new flooring is going in, I think, as we speak or for over the winter months. The facility continues to get brighter and more beautiful and reflective of the wonderful people we care for there. And that's in large part because of the leadership of Rochelle. So I thank you for that. 
And finally, the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. We can't get taxes and tax base and revenue coming our way if we don't have good businesses, new businesses, more job growth, employment. And the county, for a number of years now, has, Sheboygan, has supported the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation, the chamber, and the good work that they do, and these two entities work together on uh, making good things happen in the community. We have a, a vibrant museum. We have the Bay Lake Regional Planning Commission that some of you serve on. Uh, there are a number of non-departmental areas that are critically important to the community, and we continue to support. They're part of the 2017 budget, and I thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Adam. Next, I'd like to declare a public hearing on the 2017 proposed budget. I'd like to note that the notice of public hearing was published on October 4th, 2016. Is there anyone here who would like to speak during the public hearing? Is there anyone here who would like to speak during the public hearing? Is there anyone here who would like to speak during the public hearing? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Next, we'll have the review of the 2017 proposed budget. John, if you just give me a minute here. Sure. Okay, John. Okay, it's in your index, page I. We'll start with building services, page 37 through 39. Supervisor Winkle. Level seven five, Mr. Wilson. five. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. And as we go through it, if somebody has a question or whatever, this is the time then after John says it to raise that question. Otherwise, I'll say next and go on. Okay, next. Clerk of Courts, page 40 to 41. Next. Corporation Council, page 42 to 43. Next. County Administrator, pages 44 to 45. Next. County Board, page 46. Next. County Clerk, page 47 to 48. Next. Court Commissioner, page 49 and 50. Next. District Attorney, page 51 to 53. Next. Employee Benefits and Insurance, page 54 and 55. Next. Finance, page 56 and 57. Next. Health and Human Services, page 58 through 61. Next. Human Resources, page 62 and 63. Next. Information Technology, page 64 and 65. Next. Medical Examiner, page 66. Supervisor so Adden. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, do we have a reason why this uh, budget has gone up as much as it has? I would like to respond to Supervisor Otten's question. Adam? Good question. Um, my recollection, and medical examiner Dave Lafine can correct me or add on if he wishes to, but when we did the IT allocation, it was a new process this year, and so in some cases we had winners and losers as that was reallocated. Overall, as I said, the overall cost went down for IT, which is a credit to Chris and his staff, but uh, the medical examiner was one of the losers. Based on the formula, their interdepartmental expense went up, so that's the predominant reason for the increase. So is that true of the uh, treasurer's uh, 
budget as well? I believe it is. I'm going to look over at Laura Henning Lorenz to see if she's nodding, and she is. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Atten. Supervisor Uraner? No. Okay. Um, John, you want to continue? Sure. Non departmental, page 67 and 68. Next. Oops. Question. Supervisor Baumgart. I didn't um, mean to go next too fast. Yes. Yeah, just a little bit. Not a lot, but uh, I'll slow up a tick or two. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Planning and Conservation, pages 69 through 72. Next. Property and Liability Insurance, page 73. Next. Register of Deeds, page 74 and 75. Next. Rocky Knoll, page 76 through 78. Next. Sheriff, page 79 through 82. Next. Transportation Airport Division, page 83 through 85. Supervisor Adam. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is another budget I see has gone up quite a bit. I just didn't know the reason why. Is there a good reason for it going up? Tax levy went to 554. Thank you for your question. Who would like to respond? It, the question was about um, transportation. We're in the airport division, right? Uh, increase in the the levy. Craig, you want to come up? Why don't you come up? Increases and it has to do with the capital outlay. They adding to th the three hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars of equipment, uh, snowplow trucks. Uh, so that affected the. I thought those were uh, in the capital. It gets added into the budget. The the uh, if you see where the tax levy is added in, then all of a sudden they bring in the capital outlay as well. So that's what drives up their cost. So this was all approved? Yes, the capital has been approved. Was this additional equipment that normally isn't? No, the snowplow truck is a replacement. They had an a old uh, truck of ours from 1992. A camp that was handed down from the highway department, so that's added. We'll get rid of the one that's there, um, so it's a replacement. The uh, used pickup truck that will be added to that, that fleet. Um, the security fence needs to be replaced. Over the years, it's uh, had... Uh, some freeze thaw issues where the fence got pushed up and, and, and was wrecked, so that needs to be fixed. And the bird bangers are uh, something to keep the, the uh, birds off of the off of the uh, airfield, and uh, they've been installed since probably a lot of the uh, um, work was done out there, and now they need to be replaced again. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Supervisor Otten. Uh, Supervisor Epping. Thank you. Well, you can disregard that because I was curious about what a bird banger was. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else on the airport division? All right, transportation highway division, pages 86 through 89. Next, treasurer, page 90 and 91. Next. UW Extension, page 92 and 93. Next. UW Sheboygan, page 94. <coughs> Next. Veterans Commission, page 95. Next. 
Veteran Service, page 96. Anyone? Supervisor Winkle. Move to refer back to the Finance Committee. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Is there a second to that? <coughs> Supervisor Wegeman. Thank you. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Wegeman. All those in favor? Yeah, first of all, any discussion? Otherwise, we'll refer it back on this motion to the Finance Committee. Supervisor Uraner. Yes, I'd just like to, to mention, you know, even though we, we have a small decrease, this is probably one of the larger tax increases or if the largest tax increase our county has seen with, with the sales tax piece added on there. Um, certainly appreciate all the good work all the departments are doing. Um, but I just wanted to point out, you know, we're saying we have a, a decrease, but really overall we're, we're seeing a significant increase. And we, we are, of course, uh, including in this plan, probably the lar one of the largest expenditures we've ever had as well with the capital, uh, with the uh, transportation complex. Um, but I guess I'm just gonna counter the fact that we're decreasing the tax, uh, that the, the amount of money coming from our taxpayers is actually uh, increasing in 2017 with, with the sales tax component added on. So just wanted to mention that. Thank you, Supervisor Rayner. Anyone else? Okay, all those in favor of referring it to the Finance Committee, vote aye. Motions approved unanimously. Supervisor Bemis. I move we adjourn. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Supervisor Winkle. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Please push your aye button. Okay, now we're done. We are adjourned.